Hi, I'm Brian Mallow, coming to you live from Lindau, Germany, where this week it's the 72nd annual Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting featuring about 40 Nobel laureates and about 600 young scientists, most of them are right here, um, from 89 countries. And in fact, um, we have several nations represented right here. So um, let's meet uh, my guest right now. Uh, Adaranke Sakpere is from Nigeria and working in Nigeria. So easy to remember. <laughs> and Caroline Kajogi is from Kenya, but currently working in Japan. And uh, Iris Odstrasil is Argentinian, but working in Switzerland. And basically all postdocs or something similar to a postdoc. <laughs> and um, we're, honestly, once again, I keep finding people who um, are finally here in person when they were originally accepted to be in the 2020 uh, Lindau meeting. But because of the pandemic, <clears throat> there was an entirely virtual uh, program and the invention of something that's probably a new tradition now. We are now three years into the online Sciathon, but these were participants on one team of the first online Sciathon. And um, the Sciathon, would, would, would you tell me what the Sciathon is? Anyone want to, what was the Sciathon? It's like a hackathon. So we pitched uh, ideas and uh, we tried to um, come up with ways to present them in a way that's um, understandable and that could form solutions to the problems we currently are facing in the world. And yeah, that's, we did that for a short time. That's why it's a thorn. Right, 40 that you had, it was competing teams had only 48 hours to develop an idea. Yeah. I don't remember now in that year, do you know how many teams were competing? Over 30. I think over, over 30, 30 teams. And what were, what was the theme? The Lindau guidelines. Yeah, we right. Lindau guidelines. So the Lindau guidelines are a set of guidelines to do good science. Uh, originally, the concept was proposed by a laureate, Elizabeth Blackburn, and um, they're really <clears throat> a set of guidelines about open access to science, publishing data, diversity and inclusivity. Um, that's some of them. <laughs> and so every project had something to do with one of these <clears throat> um, guidelines. So you were all on a team uh, and the project was the mentoring hub. So, so what was the concept of the mentoring hub? Uh, the mentoring hub was, uh, the idea was to form a platform where uh, scientists can be either mentors or mentees or both, uh, such that if young scientists wants, want to ask for advice or mentorship in any aspect of their academic career, they could find somebody within the network and, uh, and get support. Excellent. And, you know, a lot of the projects, um, the only, uh, they only had to be, uh, a 48 hour project for fun, but some of these projects have actually been further developed and the mentoring hub um, went on beyond the 48 hours, didn't it? Um, yeah, tell me something about it. Adaranke, yeah. let's hear from you. <laughs> um, so after the um, sign tone, so we were fortunate to um, like emerge like the best team based on the um, guideline we worked on. And um, based on that, we got like seed funds to further like develop our ideas, not just um, something that will remain not um, real or that people can't um, relate with. Um, so based on the seed fund we got, um, we we're able to have the um, hub um, live and people can now make use of the hub um, here. Excellent. And. Um while we're talking to you, you're a computer scientist. Yeah. Um, what What do you do? What What's your area of specialty? Oh, interesting. Um, so I work in the interdisciplinary field of ICT for development. Um, so basically, I try to look at problems in my society that um, re that are related to developmental goals, and then I try to make use of appropriate ICT tools or technology to solve such problem. Um, so it could be a problem that revolves around human-computer interaction, 
or data privacy or artificial intelligence. So it all depends on the problem. So the problem usually informs the type of solutions that we deploy or we propose. Excellent. And Caroline, what kind of scientist are you? I'm an immunologist and as well as I do some genetic work. So currently working on uh, malaria and uh, for immunology I'm looking at placental malaria and we work on, I'm working on from, um, macrophages and how these have an effect on how this, the immune response to infection during placental malaria. And on the other hand, I'm looking also at um, drug metabolizing enzymes for malaria. So different people respond differently to drugs, so we check what uh, mutations occur in these drug metabolizing enzymes and how this can affect now how these drugs are, yeah, are either dispensed in terms of um, therapeutic effect and also um, um, adverse reactions. Yeah, basically that. What type of bug is malaria? Is it a virus or it's bacteria? It's a parasite. It's a parasite. Yeah. I just saw, and it's interesting. So, and a bacteriophage is like a type of virus that you're using to fight this parasite. I am a bacteriophage. Sorry. Oh, bacteria. <laughs> so. Maybe I, uh, sorry, maybe I didn't explain No, I think well. you probably explained it well and it's my <laughs> comprehension that's the problem. So two facets. So I'm working on malaria, but there's the immunological aspect and then the genetics aspect. So with uh, immunology, macrophages, which are immune cells, they actually, um, they take on infected cells. And so they produce some cytokines, which, are, which enable the humans, or yeah, anyway, if it's in mice as well, to fight the infection. So that's the aspect of immunology. Then the other side is I'm looking also at genes that um, are responsible for drug metabolizing um, enzymes. Excellent. Yeah. And, and Iris, uh, what about you? What type of scientist are you? I'm a neuroscientist. Mm -hmm. uh, I am particularly interested in how the organs of the body talk to the brain and vice versa. So the uh, bidirectional communication between the body and the brain and particularly how signals from the internal organs of the body are processed in the brain and uh, help compute um, or yeah, help in the neuronal computations and in behavior. Are you talking about communication along neurons or are there Mostly other systems? Mostly along of, neurons, yeah, yes. Yeah. There's yes. other types of communication between them? Yes, you have communications through hormones or small molecules, yes. But I am looking particularly in, in synaptic connections, so neuronal connections, yes. Syna I'm fascinated by the fact that, that the synapse, it's amazing to me that, that signals, for instance, if we look at vision, uh, light information comes into my eye, it's converted into, there's chemical and electrical signaling. And then when, when you have an electrical signal traveling along a neuron, and then you reach a synapse, and that's converted to a chemical signal, and then back to an electrical signal, and I don't know if that happens more than once, it's almost like a game of telephone, and how can the final product represent reality? It just seems crazy. <laughs> Yes. Well, I guess the, the first question is, what is reality? And philosophically, right, um, you have, of course, what we feel is reality is completely filtered by our perception and our nervous system. So that's already one thing. Uh, but at the same time, the nervous system is um, incredibly robust, right? This is not happening at the level of one synapse, but there's many synapses and many neurons contributing, which adds to the robustness of the system and makes sure that the message gets preserved. Excellent. So um, let's talk about science and then we'll talk about the meeting a little bit. But um, anyone can jump in here. Um, is there something you wish more people understood about science or, your, you know, it could be your field of science or science in general that you wish the public understood a little better? I know I'm hitting you with surprise questions. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't tell you that one ahead of time. I think something that's important is that uh, we think about science as the ultimate truth, but as scientists, we deal with a lot of uncertainty. Our measurements come with uncertainty. We always have to be ready to be falsifying our hypotheses. We have to do experiments to falsify. Um, and at the same time, new hypotheses or new data might come along that shows that um, what we thought was the right model has to be um, tweaked a little bit. So I would say 
um, it's not something that's set in stone, but it's something that is always uh, being updated as we get more and more evidence. A self-correcting process. Yes. Yes. Well, I think, in my opinion, also, I agree with you. And also, I, I would want to encourage the public to engage in science, even though maybe they're not scientists, maybe take part in some ways to ask questions and maybe tell us what they want to get communicated better, to understand better. I think, yeah, that's one way. And we can move on to other <laughs> questions, too. But um, what do you love? Did you always know you wanted to be a scientist or a computer scientist specifically? Um, so it's a bit difficult. Um, right from high school, I'd always like do well in mathematics or anything that is uh, mathematically inclined. Um, so based on that, I guess that was what informed um, the reason why I chose computer science. Even though I didn't struggle with subjects like biology, but personally, I don't like reading things that are voluminous. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I find biology to be really voluminous. You have so many things to read. Uh, so at, at times, I'm always, I don't also like cramming. I like to put things in my words or the way I feel about things. So for me, um, mathematics or anything that is um, logical is um, appeals to me better. But, you know, since I'm working in interdisciplinary fields, so I can still work on health-related issues. Um, like, look at my, pro like, currently now I'm working on sickle cell anemia um, problem in Nigeria. Like, we're trying to see how we can better support sickle cell anemia patients um, with respect to treatment, with respect to their daily life, you know. So even though I'm not in the COVID of biology, but because of my field, I can still work with people. They can do the reading. <laughs> they can do the reading and just give me maybe a summary of what is needed for me, you know, yeah. And let me ask slightly different, Caroline. What, what do you love about science? Like, and what gets you up in the morning to go into the lab and, and do your research? Ah, interesting. You know, actually, I for me, I feel like science is very impactful. Like, there's so many solutions that have been solved by science. So when I look at it in that aspect, I feel like, yeah, I can contribute something that is impactful to make health uh, lives healthier, especially now that we have so many other diseases coming up, like we had the corona. So, yeah, I'm, I'm op optimistic about science. And Iris? Um, what about, yeah, what, uh, is there something you wish people understood more about science? Did you already just answer that? Yes, you did. Sorry, you know. Hey, it's been a long day. We can't do a second take. So if you were worried about looking dumb, I'm the one looking dumb. Um, so, um, what, but um, what, what makes you get up and work and what makes you love? Did you always know you wanted to study the brain? No, I, I think I loved science as a kid, but I also really loved dancing, so maybe <laughs> being a ballerina would have been an option, I don't know. Uh, but it, it did take some time until physics was something that I also really uh, enjoyed. Um, and it wasn't until uh, I was starting to apply for colleges that I realized that neuroscience was the thing that one could do. Yeah. And then I got really excited about that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the meeting a little bit. and. Let's start by talking about the session that just happened right over there inside the Insohala. In fact, it was, uh, what was the session about? Adirante, I think you might have some personal knowledge about this because you, not everyone gets this opportunity. It's a special opportunity just to be here, but you got to participate in a panel discussion. What, what, what was it about? Oh, okay, so the panel discussion was about hey, high and medicine. Like I stated earlier on, that. I'm more of a computer scientist than a medical um, person. Um, so I was able to contribute um, to the discussion based on what I've done with respect to Hey Hi, like projects that, are, like I said earlier on, we try to look at problems in health domain and then we propose solutions. For some of those solutions, they are Hey Hi models or machine learning models. For some, it could be a simple mobile application. So I was able to contribute based on tasks that I've done that I, we have proposed or we have used like a high solutions yeah excellent and um, Caroline um, we're only gosh it seems like so far into it but we're about two and a half days into the meeting mm -hmm. um, what are some highlights you've already experienced 
Yeah, for me, it's the connections. I've made uh, beautiful connections and also the uh, open exchanges we've had with the laureates. Yes. They've been so engaging. They've given us anecdotes on how they perform their science till where they are at, which has been very instrumental and inspirational. Excellent. Yeah. Iris, any highlights? Uh, yeah, the, the close contact with the uh, Nobel laureates has been really, really nice. Um, and also meeting the other young scientists. I yeah. think there's real excitement for science and that mm -hmm. just makes everybody be even more excited. So yeah. that's yeah. very nice. And we finally <laughs> got to meet. Yes, <laughs> and that's also oh, true. Right. So yeah. you were, you, I don't know where you all were three years ago. You were maybe in Nigeria. Yeah. Kenya. You were in Kenya. And I was in Switzerland. And you, yeah. were in Switzerland. and you were part of a larger team with people in other time zones yeah. working together virtually and then you got to meet here in person. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> and um, yes, we've been working in this project for three years and yeah. we hadn't really met in person. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, I was, what you just said about um, uh, some of the, the type of uh, exchanges you've had with Lawrence, like, can you describe what, like how in depth uh, an interaction are we talking about? What kind of? Well, yesterday I was um, having dinner and sitting next to uh, Rich Roberts and um, it was just a very pleasant, very engaging dinner. Um, and that was really nice. And we got to talk about science. We got to talk about a life in science. Uh, he gave us some advice. It was really wonderful. Followed by music and dancing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so quite the experience. So um, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Um, I know there's so much going on here um, uh, that you're always feel like you're missing out on something, even if it's just mingling with the other young scientists. But congratulations with the Mentoring Hub. Thank you. Congratulations, Adoramka, for being on your panel. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of the meeting. And uh, we'll sign off. These are just three of the 600 young scientists here this week. And we'll have more live interviews with them. Bye. <laughs>